Good evening. Shalom and good evening, everyone. Thank you, Saul, for the kind introduction. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the Jewish National Fund, for bringing people together from across the country, across the world, here to Colorado, in support of the Jewish people, of Israel, of humanitarian causes across the world. And on behalf of the great state of Colorado, I want to warmly welcome you to our state. Colorado is a place where people come from all over, uh, where we work to protect and enhance freedom. We're known for our world-class mountains, our vibrant art scene, our incredible food. I certainly hope that while you're here, you get to enjoy a little bit of what Colorado has to offer. I also want to make sure you know the ski season is fully open. But Colorado is also known for standing shoulder to shoulder against hate. This is a profoundly difficult time. October 7th is a date that will be forever etched in history for Israel and the world as a demonstration of abject cruelty and hatred. The killing and kidnapping of innocent civilians, men, women, children in Israel by the terrorist organization Hamas is a nightmare brought to life. And I know that for so many of us, this has been incredibly personal. I think most of us here are but one or two degrees of separation from somebody who was lost or kidnapped. Perhaps these were personal friends of yours. There's a lot of pain. It's made worse by the fact that we're seeing the rise of anti-Semitism and hate in America, across the world. The anti-Semitic demons of old that we all hoped had been vanquished, now fueled by social media being used to amplify dangerous rhetoric and misinformation. Like perhaps some of yours, my great-grandparents came to this country early 20th century to escape the persecution that they faced in Eastern Europe for who they were and what they believed. It's that same persecution and violence and that vicious cycle that's taken so many lives throughout our history, most recently in these heinous attacks. And if anyone asks why the world needs a Jewish state of Israel, the evidence is now more self-evident than ever before. You know, I grew up in a generation where we heard stories of the War of Independence, the Six Day War, the Yom Kippur War, of course, the living legends who helped Israel survive its early days, truly inspired those who sought freedom and liberty across the world. And now in our time, Israel is tested once again with American support, with the philanthropic support of those in this room and so many others. We know the hostages will be freed and we will achieve a just and enduring peace in the Middle East. I know we're encouraged to see some of the news of the last few days where international mediation has led to the return of some of the hostages, the joy on the faces of parents reunited with kids, of families seeing their grandparents for the first time. But we also know that there are many more hostages who have yet to return home. And I proudly wear with you the necklace that says, bring them home now. Like many of you, I have children. Our kids are 12 and nine, and it's heartbreaking to put to words the suffering experienced by the children what's happening to them. And we know that there are more difficult times ahead. But in spite of this, our greatest strength is our ability to stand together, to support the people of Israel in their time of need, to be an example of hope and light that others can follow, and to stand against hate in all of its forms. Of course, bringing this vision to life isn't easy. It's a daily effort. The horrific events of October 7th the loss of innocent civilian life in Israel and Gaza are deeply tragic reminders of the importance of the work that you're here to support. Together we can and we must 
fight all forms of hatred with relentless courage and steadfast determination so that one day our children and their children can know a world without this pain and suffering. This conference, the next few days you spend here, is an opportunity for discussions that lead to that goal. The role of kind-hearted donors like yourself across the world can help secure a prosperous and safe Israel and Middle East. I look forward to the conversations ahead. I'm honored that they're occurring in our great state of Colorado, and I thank everyone for being here to continue this important work. Welcome to Colorado, and enjoy your, your time in our great state. Thank you. Not so fast. Okay. Come with me. I'm schlepping you like I used to. So, thank you, Governor. We're grateful to have you as a friend and a leader like you. One of our organization's newest initiatives is called Be Inscribed. Jewish National Fund USA has a scribe on the top of Masada, creating new Torah scrolls by hand. People can buy a letter, a word, a phrase, or even a weekly portion at our website, and a beautiful certificate is sent to their friends or family as bar or bat mitzvah gifts, special anniversaries, and for other meaningful life events. When each scroll is completed, it is provided to a Jewish community in the south or the north of Israel, which Jewish National Fund USA is trying to help grow. These scrolls are a symbol of the tenacity and resilience of the Jewish people. Such a scroll often becomes central to the community's identity. As JNF USA begins to plan for the rebuilding of so many communities in the south of Israel, such Masada-created Torah scrolls will be in even greater demand. I'd like to ex give you this, and please accept this Be Inscribed plaque as a token of our appreciation for all that you do on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people. It states that a Torah portion has been inscribed in your honor in a Torah on top of Masada, in the very same place where thousands of years ago, Jewish heroes refused to surrender to the Roman army. Then people thought this was the end of our people's story, but they were wrong, just as those who speak to destroy us today are wrong. We dedicate this portion in your name because thanks to you, our people's story continues. Thank you, Governor.